Welcome to the Friday edition of The Harvest Show. Stefan Radulich here with Valerie Lowe and Pete Summerall, the president and CEO of LaCie Broadcasting. Hope you've had a great week and are ready for a great weekend. And you missed Choose Your News. If you're tuning in right now, <laughs> you'll notice Chuck Freebie is not here. He's uh, helping his daughter move into college. and. Uh, with all of his money. And yesterday was <laughs> yeah. a Choose Your News Day, so you, you folks at home missed it. But I think we'll be okay with that. This was a big, this was a big uh, move into college weekend, I yeah. think, or week. Yeah. You know, there's a number of people that I know that have been having to move kids into college. And I remember that. And we were, I was talking today on the phone in a conference call with a gentleman who just moved his daughter into uh, IU uh, mm -hmm. in Bloomington. And it was a very emotional time. And I said, yeah. I was emotional with my first one. I yeah. was pretty happy on the last one. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, Second, third, yeah, yeah, get them yeah, out of yeah. here. Okay, so you have two boys, one girl. Was Angela? Three was boys. it three boys? Okay, three that's boys. right. Three, three boys, boys, one girl. And so, was it any different for Angela? I mean, did you have to take a lot? Did she have a lot of stuff to take up? Yes, there, there, was, there, was, there was a lot of, there was especially shoes. There was a lot of shoes. <laughs> yeah, but they they all got along very very well. So, it is a bittersweet moment, and I know uh, you know it's like you you see your kids growing up, but you know that's got to happen, and right. and uh, you trust that you've done what you can do, and. The Lord's going to take them the rest of the way. Amen. And yeah, Amen. Yeah. That can be a challenge. Yes, it can be. Uh, even with my daughter, they, she started uh, high school uh, last week here locally, and, and that was, I mean, to me, it's like high school. Like, I remember her, she's like this big, you know? <laughs> what happened? You know, where does it, it's terrible. The time just flies, but uh, it's important to make those, those connections. Yeah. Well, I got the T-shirt that says, my daughter and all of my money attends Florida A&M <laughs> University. <laughs> that's what I remember. A practical way to look yeah, at it. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's good. Uh, we're going to have Kim Susky on a little uh -huh. bit later in the program. And uh, Kim is in charge of LaCie Tours. Right. Uh, she's going to be sharing about her trip to Israel just this last few <laughs> weeks with her family, a uh, personal trip. But uh, I know that did, bringing folks to Israel has been part of the fabric of LaCie Ministries for, for decades and decades. Right. And irregardless of what is in the headlines or right. what, uh, you know, uh, drums are beating or, or, you know, what people are saying in the news, uh, we've always found that Israel is a place of, it's very peaceful. And with respect to uh, tourism, uh, it's a thriving industry that really uh, should not be interrupted by the things that we read in the papers. Yeah, that's true. Kim's going to have some real interesting perspectives coming up here in the next few minutes. But, uh, uh you know, my dad, Dr. Lester Summerall, first went to Israel right after it became a nation, back in the very early 1950s. I don't think it was there, you know, in 48 when they became a nation, but mm -hmm. uh, he had a very keen interest in what's going on in Israel. Uh, we lived, I was born in Manila, and we lived there for a little bit, came back to the United States, to South Bend, Indiana. And, uh, in 1956, he moved us all to, uh, uh, to Jerusalem. We lived in Jerusalem mm -hmm. for a little over a year. Mm -hmm. And he was pastor of uh, the Jerusalem Assembly of God Church. And mm -hmm. we literally lived right around the corner from the Great Synagogue and right, town, right downtown Jerusalem, mm -hmm. right on uh, King George Street. And so it was, a, it was a very interesting time. Of course, I was only about three, and I don't remember much of being there, but yeah. really... Our family has always been very involved in, in Israel. And uh, beginning in the middle 60s, we started taking tour groups to Israel every year without fail, no matter what. We, we've, we've always gone and uh, we've always had a terrific time. We've been privileged to be able to escort thousands and thousands mm -hmm. of people there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the key reason really is to expose people to the land of the Bible. Mm -hmm. The Bible really, truly does come to life. It's an amazing thing. And people can debate the politics and the, the geographical issues and that kind of thing and uh, the, the personal issues, but Israel is an amazing country. Uh, the people from all over the world right. have assimilated into Israel right. and become a nation. I don't, I don't know that that's happened anywhere mm -hmm. else except maybe the United States uh, uh, in, in, on earth mm -hmm. where people came from so many different places to become one nation mm -hmm. with one common purpose and common cause. Mm -hmm. And so it really is an amazing, amazing nation in so many ways, uh, whether it's technology or, or it's, whether it's, it's uh, you know, manufacturing or education. Uh, despite all the rhetoric regarding Israelis, I just read this morning that a, a, a leading doctor in, the, in, in Israel, an Israeli, has been named to be head of the European Medical Commission or something along that line. Mm -hmm. And uh, you wouldn't think that'd be happening in today's environment, right. but people recognize that there is something unique about Israelis and about Israel in general. And mm -hmm. I believe it's the hand of God's on that nation. Uh, 
and we had Bo uh, Brian Bush on yesterday, and you can hear tour buses going mm -hmm. in and out, and people in different languages. That's an interesting thing too for folks that go to go to Israel, go on a pilgrimage. Uh, the Bible comes alive, but you're seeing believers and fellow followers of Christ from Korea and Japan mm -hmm. and Australia and uh, the European continent and uh, South America, people from all over the world uh, that come to, uh, to that place looking for their, their, their roots and their spiritual roots and finding it. Yeah, I forget now if it's Kenya or Nigeria, one of those two African nations, they have a very special program where they will sponsor a Muslim to uh, go to Mecca once in their lifetime. To be perfectly fair to the Christian community, they'll sponsor Christians to go to Jerusalem once in their lifetime, the same mm -hmm. thing. And so you see a lot of tourists from Africa, uh, and it, you wonder, okay, sometimes you get this impression, how can they afford this? Well, their government is sending them, right. and they realize the importance Forms, of a yeah. spiritual base, a spiritual foundation. Mm -hmm. And that's really our purpose in taking people to, to Israel. It's not a vacation. Uh, no. You know, it, it's not, uh, not necessarily an adventure tour. It really is all about the Bible coming to life. When you go out on that Sea of Galilee, out on that boat, <laughs> and shut the motor off, and you just realize... Mm -hmm. You know, this is the same Sea of Galilee, the same lake that Christ was on. Christ mm -hmm. walked on the water here. He, he recruited the, uh, all yeah. of the, the disciples, you know, from that area. His headquarters were in Capernaum, right on the water. And mm -hmm. it really is an amazing thing to be able to experience. And, you know, Pete, as we see, the waters look so calm here. But in my hotel late at night, mm -hmm. The, the Sea of Galilee was just roaring. It was clashing. And I could imagine, you know, when you go out there during the daytime, you're like, is this the same sea mm -hmm. that was, you know, back in biblical times right. where, you know, uh, you know, Peter walks on the water and there's this storm, storm. that is going on? Mm -hmm. Well, I got a chance to feel the impact of that. And it that can night. change. The weather can change, you know, dramatically mm -hmm. because of the way the, ge the the geography is of that place. But it, it lives up to its name right. and its history. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what I like, and it's like going back home. People mm -hmm. ask me all the time. I keep saying, I want to go back to Israel. Mm -hmm. I want right. to go back because it's like going back home. I right. mean, I'm so grateful to that country mm -hmm. for giving me my savior. Right. And I want to, and the Bible does come to life. You just, you wherever you walk. And a, another good thing is you can go there one year mm -hmm. And the next year you go back, they've, re they've of, discovered something else. A lot of new things. Mm -hmm. A church yeah. that's, yeah. Uh, you know, a thousand years old, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. And you can even get baptized in the River Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> you knew I had to bring that up. That's right. For you people who do not know the backstory, I went to Israel one time, didn't get a chance to get baptized. Uh, they but pointed at the river <laughs> in yeah, your bus as you're driving all, by. As I was driving by. That's why it's important. Here's the deal. That's why it's important to go with the Lassie Tours, because they will make sure you get baptized. Uh -huh. We will make sure you get baptized uh -huh. in the Jordan River. So I did get a chance to get baptized in the Jordan River thanks to my boss. Okay. Pete <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of fun with that, but it really is an important time. And usually mm -hmm. Uh, when we say have a group of, say, 100 people, mm -hmm. uh, there's probably between 50 and 75 mm -hmm. who will want to get baptized. And, and for the most part, it's a second baptism. It's more it of a commemoration. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and it's not the exact place where Jesus got baptized, but at the same time, it's the River Jordan, the River Jordan. right by the yeah. Galilee. So yeah. it's, it's a cool opportunity for yeah. people. Well, still to come on Harvest today, she traveled to Israel for 11 years with every Lassie tour. And now Kim Sussie is going to share some memories from her recent trip, a personal trip with her family during Operation Protective Edge. Plus, the president of Swiss America, Craig R. Smith, reports on the latest economic news that's dominating the headlines. And what are you doing to share Jesus with others? Later on in the show, we'll tell you how you can be part of a global summer harvest. We want you to stay with us. There's more harvest to come. During the summer months, we need to raise $600,000 to support the ministry of Lassie broadcasting around the world. Whether it's shortwave radio or sending out Bibles uh, all over the world or prayer line or Middle East television, where I've been watching right now, you know, we need to be able to fund this. And so we need your help today during these summer months where sometimes people, you know, put ministry out of their mind. We have a very special offer for you this month, The Secrets of Answer Prayer by my dad, Dr. Lester Summerall. I'm at an incredible place of prayer. I just got done praying at the Western Wall myself and you know, prayer is actually very simple, but at the same time, 
there's a principle to prayer. And as you go through this book, you'll learn the secrets to answered prayer. So you can go to the phone, go to the website today, and you can get your free copy of this book of Secrets to Answered Prayer. Please help in our global summer harvest campaign by sending your best donation. Call 1-800-365-3732 or donate on the web at lacy.com. To have what Scripture says is given by inspiration of God is a real treasure, and that's why we want to invite you to sign up for the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall. This free daily e-devotional draws from Dr. Sumrall's timeless writings and biblical insight on many issues confronting us today. Just go to lacy.com and click on the Treasury Sign Up banner to receive the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall in your inbox every day. That's l-e-s-e-a dot com. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Do you have some treasures like silver and gold coins or old jewelry that you don't wear anymore? Why not invest them into changing lives for Jesus? Ask yourself if these treasures are really worth keeping, or should you invest them into making an eternal difference in someone's life? Call 1-800-365-3732 for a prepaid insured shipping envelope. Lay up your treasure in heaven. It'll be waiting for you when you get there. And welcome back. I'm joined now by Kim Susky, who's the director of Lacey Tours. And um, Kim doesn't necessarily like being on television, so we're going to try and go a little easy on the questions. But, Thank you. But first and foremost, what is your position in working with Lacey Tours? I'm the director of Lacey Israel Tours, okay. and I organize, um, plan, and facilitate each tour. Okay, so what goes into that? How do you, how do, you do that? It's a lot. You know, we deal with the airlines. We deal with the land operator in Israel. Uh, we, we have the, the paperwork mm -hmm. that needs to go out to each individual and then processing the paperwork mm -hmm. and speaking with people on the phone and uh, from A to B. Mm -hmm. And then I'm very blessed to be able mm -hmm. to travel on the tours mm -hmm. and to make sure that everything runs smoothly while we're there. If anyone has questions, I'm here to, to help yeah. them. You know, one of the things that people really probably can't really understand that much, especially if you do any kind of traveling, Israel's really one of the easiest places to travel to. It really is. You just need a passport. You don't need shots. Everything's modern. You can drink the water. The hotels are modern, comfortable. Food is wonderful. So, Kim, yeah. it says a lot to me that you've, you've take. I mean, 11 years you've been traveling to Israel with uh, Lacey Tours every trip to the Holy Land. So that's at least three times a year. You do the math, three times, um, mm. 11 years. And then you turn around and you go with your family. Yeah. So we, what made you do that? Well, you know, I, I brought my kids when they were 16. I felt that it was important that at, as a teenager for them to see the land of the Bible, mm -hmm. um, it made a great impact on them. Mm -hmm. My husband, Mike, has not had a chance to come because he started a new business and it's been really hard for him to get away. Um, so it's been on my heart to plan a trip where my entire family could come and we could share this together. Um, but we just haven't been able to work out the schedule. So we have two kids in college uh, and my son and his wife, my son Travis and his wife Sarah, they're plan starting to plan a family. So we knew that time was coming where things were changing the dynamics of our family. So I said, look, we need to plan this. We found two weeks in August that was perfect for everyone. And we just began planning the trip of a lifetime, the Susky family adventure. All right. Um, you did a lot of selfies. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> now, what, what was the purpose in, in so many photos like this? Well, I'll tell you, it, it just really started off with, obviously, a lot of people before we left, mm -hmm. they said, what are you doing? Are you crazy? Um, you know, a lot of people were concerned. I was concerned mm -hmm. even before we left. Um, I wanted to show everyone what the reality and the truth is in mm -hmm. Israel. We got there and we found it completely safe. Mm -hmm. a f after a few days of being there, we honestly kind of forgot that there was even a situation going on. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, the media has this, gives us this perception that the entire country is in turmoil, that mm -hmm. there is bombs going off everywhere and people, it, it's just not true. Mm -hmm. There is an unfortunate area of the mm -hmm. country that is tragically under war. Mm -hmm. But we, the tourist sites, we don't travel there. Brian was mentioning on yesterday's program while he was doing his uh, uh, interaction with us live on the air, there were tour buses going along behind him 
on a regular basis that was yeah. almost drowning out his audio. Yeah, we did see, while we were there, we saw um, individual travelers and we saw groups from all over the world. We saw Asia groups, Russian groups, some U.S. groups. We saw college kids, birthright groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We saw people in the country. Now, it's true, tourism is down and the tourism industry in Israel is suffering, mm -hmm. um, which is sad mm -hmm. because it's not necessary mm -hmm. because it is safe. Yeah. So before we left, I was watching TV like crazy. You know, mm -hmm. Operation Protective Edge wasn't stopping and it was mm -hmm. going and I thought, oh, what am I doing? Or am I taking my family to someplace mm -hmm. that's not safe? <clears throat> my daughter-in-law is now pregnant. You know, I, I don't want to do this if mm -hmm. this is not safe. So the media, as I was watching it, I was just becoming more and more concerned. So what I did was I turned off the TV mm -hmm. and I decided mm -hmm. to gather the facts. Mm -hmm. And I contacted my friends, my coworkers in Israel, the, minister, the Israel Ministry of Tourism, and I said, what are the facts? The facts that they told me of people living life as normal, uh, that it is safe to travel there, the tourism sites are not affected. They told me, Kim, you will be safe. Mm -hmm. And I trust the people in Israel. My, of course, they wouldn't want me to come mm -hmm. if I wasn't, if, I, if right. we were in danger. So, we turned the TV off. We had a family mm -hmm. meeting and said, look, guys, here are the facts. You decide what to do. Mm -hmm. And the first question came up was, how many suitcases can we bring? <laughs> <laughs> there, everyone was on board. Uh -huh. yeah. It was very mm -hmm. exciting. Now, you guys drove yourself. We did. We rented a van. You rented a van and drove yourself yeah. around the country. I asked my daughter at the end of the trip, I said, what was the scariest part of your trip? And they said, you're driving? <laughs> not my driving. My <laughs> husband's driving. <laughs> Driving in Israel is a challenge. It's easy. It's not easy, but it, it is. It is an adventure for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, Kim. Not only did your entire family go, but your your daughter spent a summer there. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Studying there she in did. Israel, and you were here in the states. I mean, were you apprehensive about letting that happen? No. No, because I know the truth. Because I've been there enough. Because I I just know the truth about mm -hmm. Israel, and it's unfortunate that people make decisions. Uh, about going, about traveling there. Even though God places it on their heart to go, they make decisions based on what they, they hear about in the media. You know, long gone are the days that we watch Tom Brokaw at the 6 o'clock news right. where he gives us the facts mm -hmm. and informs us of the, of the situation of the world. Now we have a 24-hour news mm -hmm. that is giving us their opinions, and they are, are looking for ratings. That's right. And it's really sad in, right. in every situation that they're... They're promoting. It's really has an agenda. And the same agenda. situations happening right now, unfortunately, with Ferguson, Missouri, where people mm -hmm. would be making a decision. You know, is it safe to go to St. Louis? Yes, it's perfectly safe to go to St. Louis, mm -hmm. and, and it, that's not a problem. All right, uh, on to a more fun topic. What was the family's favorite thing, <laughs> favorite place? Wow. Well, um, you know, we had so many favorites, and at night, at, at dinner time, we would do high low. Mm -hmm. Every, what's your high-low? What's your high? What's your low for the day? Mm -hmm. Every night we do high-low. Um, and then at the end of the trip, we did the high-low. Mm -hmm. And I think that it was overwhelmingly the garden tomb. Mm -hmm. The garden tomb, I strategically planned to be the very last place that we stopped um, on the very last day. And everyone was just in a place of admiration for mm -hmm. what Jesus has done for us. It was a great final final yeah. moment for the tour. That really is pretty cool, isn't it? And on the tour, that is really one of the last places that we go on the tour mm -hmm. and take communion. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. So, Kim, someone is kind of still on the fence. Yeah. What would you say to that person? Well, I would say, first of all, pray about it. If God mm -hmm. has placed the desire to go to Israel in your heart, if he's calling you there, I believe there's a reason for it. I, I believe that you should really consider going. L learn the facts. Find out the facts from people like us um, any other people that you know that have traveled to Israel recently or uh, who live there, learn the facts mm -hmm. and then follow your heart and make a decision. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no risk in signing up for, like we have a November tour right. coming up and a February tour. Mm -hmm. um, if it's on your heart to go, I encourage people to sign up and go. Mm -hmm. First of all, November is a long ways away. A, lot, mm -hmm. a lot's going to right. change. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if Israel be, ever becomes unsafe, we're not going to go there. Mm -hmm. You and I travel with the groups. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go if it's unsafe. 
So I would just encourage them to follow their heart and follow what God is leading them to do. You know, what's really cool is that in, in November in particular, we've got Dr. Mark Royer, mm -hmm. uh, who uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know is, has been in the area for a long time, pastor of a church, and now is somewhat taken at more of a pastor emeritus standpoint uh, with Crossroads and is traveling around, but he's going to be a great minister, you know, on this trip. Yeah, he's really looking forward to it, too. Yeah. I've spoken with him, mm -hmm. and and he's uh, standing firm and, mm -hmm. and, you know, believing the facts mm -hmm. and excited about going because each trip, whether it's your first, your second, right. or, or your 30th, mm -hmm. <laughs> you really find really God's mm -hmm. blessing there. And then in uh, February, uh, you know, one of the highlights is uh, David Sumrall from uh, Manila, and he brings a large group of people from Manila with him, and they're always fun. There's a lot of music involved, the guitar and singing yes. and praise and worship and they must uh, daily be Pentecostal, teaching. like me. <laughs> well, they're, they're Filipino <laughs> as much as Pentecostal. So uh, no, they just they're a fun group to be February around. February is a and beautiful it's time really, to go. Really, really a terrific yeah. time. But November is fantastic, also. Mm -hmm. So in closing, what what would you say to someone again, like Valerie's just saying? Somebody's just thinking about it. Should they call right now and get information? Is that a good thing to do? Yeah, call us. Talk mm -hmm. to Lumi and I. Mm -hmm. Call me personally. I'd be happy to to discuss what I experienced in Israel recently during mm -hmm. during the situation. Um, go to my Facebook and look mm -hmm. at all my pictures. Um, those selfies were a blast. Uh -huh. Uh, were they staged? They were not staged. <laughs> at, at first, they were staged. At first, I was like, everybody, let's do a selfie. And then, and they were like, oh, no, another selfie. Mm -hmm. So eventually, they got onto Mom's Fun. Uh -huh. And I'd say, selfie time. And I didn't know what they were doing behind me. Mm -hmm. We just went, bam, bam. That's Selfie, hilarious. took the picture. Sometimes I didn't right. even look at it until nighttime. <laughs> so... Um, well, one, one last thing I'd like to stress, and we get a lot of phone calls, mm -hmm. you know, they come in on a regular basis on our toll-free number, and, and uh, they, a lot of them sometimes are after hours, so they get answered, uh, you know, by, by a voicemail. And uh, there's a question sometimes of people of, why do we do a trip to Israel? And it really is a ministry. It it's is a ministry. It's all about a ministry. Holy cow. Lives are changed. Right. You mm -hmm. go to Israel and you walk in the footsteps of Jesus and you are in the very place on earth that God chose for his home. Mm -hmm. There, You are undoubtedly right. changed. Mm -hmm. Small way maybe, sometimes large ways. We've mm -hmm. had healings. We've had people mm -hmm. just hearing from God. You know, I believe that God speaks to us, you know, every day. We, he's, he's here with us. Mm -hmm. But when we take the time out of our life, our busy life, and we focus on a week mm -hmm. or a week and a half in Israel and focus on God and focus on the Holy Land, we seem to hear from Him yeah. a little bit louder mm -hmm. because our heart is in the right place and we, we push everything else away. Mm -hmm. So a trip to Israel right. brings you closer to Christ. Well, thank you, Kim, for allowing us to <laughs> thank share Thank you for letting trip, me share. You know, it was and fun. see all the selfies and all that. It's been fun following the, the family, Susky family adventure in Israel. So to connect with Kim, go to LaCieTours.com or call 1-800-685-3732 or Harvest right after this. Jesus said, lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they are already white for harvest. God calls every believer to bring in the harvest by sharing the gospel. And one way you can do that is by giving a gift to help LaCie Broadcasting reach our $600,000 Global Summer Harvest Campaign Goal. Reaching this goal is vital to strengthen key outreach ministries such as METV, FETV, Spread the Word, and Prayer Line. Help reap a spiritual harvest today. Call 1-800-365-3732. Are you tired yet have trouble sleeping? Wired yet can't focus? Let's face it, you only get one life. It's time to start living. It's time for a new you. Introducing the new you pack from Making Healthy Choices. This incredible package includes vitamin B12 with folic acid to promote focus and support cardiovascular health, vitamin D3 to build strong bones and muscles, Vitamin E400, an all-natural antioxidant and mineral concentrate, a fulvic acid trace mineral product essential for maximum cell function and performance. This exclusive offer is yours for the low price of $49.95 plus shipping and handling. You won't find these products in stores only by calling 1-800-965-965. 
2345 or by logging on to mhclife.com. It's time for a new you. It's time for life. Would you like to have a secure source of income for the rest of your life? What if that income was set and would never change no matter what the economy does? And at the same time, what if you knew you were changing lives for Jesus? That's right, it's a charitable gift annuity, the amazing part investment, part gift that never stops giving. The rates are much higher than savings accounts or certificates of deposit. It's the perfect way to honor God with your finances and fulfill the Great Commission. If you are over 49 and a half years old and you have at least $10,000, you may qualify. Call us at 1-866-224-2087 or go online to giftplanningatlasc.com. This hard to believe opportunity may not always be available, so call now while the rates of return are still high. Do it today, won't you? And in our Money Moment today, we're joined by Craig R. Smith, the CEO of Swiss America, SwissAmerica.com. Good to have you with us today, Craig, and kind of want to get right into it here. Uh, Janet Yellen, the head of the uh, Fed, is going to be making her comments and address uh, today. Any idea on uh, what her notes might be saying and uh, what we might expect from uh, Janet's address? Good question. If she follows what she said on Wednesday, Steph, it will probably be more the same. The, uh, the Fed Open Market Committee meetings have been very divided. There's one side of the camp that says things have approved enough to increase rates. The other side of the camp says no, the economy has not improved enough because although job, the job market has improved, real wages haven't gone up. And GDP hasn't increased enough to su 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 sustain uh, a permanent recovery. Mm -hmm. and so they're very divided. I'll be curious to see if she says, no, I'm confident enough that we're going to announce uh, we're going to keep rates here and then start in 2015 to reduce the taper to zero and then raise interest rates. If she doesn't, Steph, I think we are going to be in for at least a 4% inflation rate because, as you notice, the other day, ground beef hit an all-time high. Right. Uh, we have the CPI at at two percent right now. If you look at shadow stats, they call it at nine percent, which is which is I think what the real number is. So I expect uh, mm. I let's put it this way, Steph. What I expect and what I want may may be two two different things, quite yeah. frankly. And a uh, decision on either side of of that line is going to have impact on the markets and. Uh, the, the dollar as well, isn't it? Yeah, and, and I, I like the second part of your statement there. I think that's more important. The dollar has been absolutely el fuego. I mean, it's, it's been on fire. It's killing the euro right now. It's killing the yen. I mean, it has been as strong as could be. That's why we've seen a pullback in the oil markets. That's why gasoline's mm -hmm. dropped four cents a gallon just over the last couple of days. Uh, we've, seen, we've seen the precious metals pull back. The dollar is absolutely the strongest currency in, in the world right now. But there's a downside to that, too, in so much as that it can slow down our exports, as you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's going to have an impact. Mm -hmm. as, as, as the sea viewers know, I'm very concerned about this Dow at 17,000. I don't think there's the underpinnings to sustain it. I expect another pullback. We had a nice little 4% correction, 3.5% correction, very healthy for the markets. Uh, but until we see those real wages going up, uh, I just don't think we're out of the woods just yet. Uh, sticking on the topic of, uh, of currency and, uh, and the Fed, uh, what's been the uh, – any changes or, or with regard to their um, policy on the monetary base? Uh, we you know we talked – you have talked quite a bit about quantitative uh, easing here over the last uh, really a little bit more than a year. Uh, is that still happening? Is there plans for, for that uh, policy to continue? Well, as you, as you know, the taper has, you know, it started, the QE3 started at $85 billion a month and has come down $10 billion every couple months for the last several times. I think it's currently at $35 billion a month. Um, yes, that has had a tremendous effect. As a matter of fact, I was reading in Shadow Stats just this morning that we've expanded the money base to a record high. And, and it's, I'm glad you brought that up, Steph, because people have to understand if you create all that money, 
and you put it out in the system, ultimately you have to drain all that money back out of the system. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do that effectively, you won't have any problem with inflation and you won't damage the growth of the country through the gross domestic product. However, if you don't drain that liquidity properly, you could either have runaway inflation or you could set yourself back into a recession. And I think that's gonna be the cha challenge that Janet Yellen has. And with the Fed being so at odds on where we really are in this economy, um, uh, I, I think our currency is going to suffer as a direct result of it. So that's why I expect to see these, this, uh, this, these prices of gold below 1300 a momentary issue, and the same thing with oil below $100 a barrel. Mm. Uh, switching gears a little bit, uh, Bank of America uh, recently got fined for their mor mortgage shenanigans, if you want to put it that way. But uh, if you can comment on that and really uh, the repercussions in the, the banking industry, the banking sector, uh, from the fallout of what took place in 2008. Well, as you know, Steph, my new book will be out any day now called Don't Bank on It, where we examine the banks and we, and we take a very critical look at it. I find it almost comical that Bank of America was forced to buy countrywide mortgage, which was where all the problems uh, uh, occurred. And they had to pay an 18 billion, or close to $17.9 billion fine um, for shenanigans that they really didn't have any part of. Mm. Uh, but this is in line with what's happened. Look, they just did the same thing to JP Morgan. I think it was $16 billion. Did the same thing to Citi. Ha will this make the banks better? My answer is yes. And you know, I don't like to make predictions, but the reality is Bank of America stock should probably start going back up again now because we now have a resolve on what this fine is going to be. Mm -hmm. And what's amazing to me, Steph, is that $18 billion can be absorbed. About $6.7 billion of that is going to be in cash, and the rest will be paid out over time. But still, think about that. You're able to take a $18 billion loss in the form of a fine and then watch your stock go up. That's why we're looking at the long term of the banks. We're very concerned. We think the big banks should be broken up. I call for it in my book. I think it's killing regional banking. Regional banking supplies loans to small to medium-sized enterprises called SMEs. That's the backbone of this country, small business. 70% of all the jobs we create coming out of recessions come from small businesses. So uh, yes, this will help the banking sector on a temporary basis. On a long-term basis, Steph, I think the banks are in serious trouble. And that's why I'm offering our report don't bank on it to your viewers. Mm -hmm. And then if they call me for that report, I'll put them on the list for the books. We should have the books any day now. It, it, the most it could be is three weeks, but we think it may be earlier, where we actually show 20 different positions that these banks have that are actually diametrically opposed to you having your money deposited. That's why I love mm -hmm. to see Harold before we do money moment, because the greatest place you can put your money is in the kingdom of God. The greatest, the greatest investment, in my opinion, one of the greatest investments you can make is the charitable annuity, where you're working for the kingdom of God and you have a guaranteed income. So uh, uh, the, the banks are gonna be quite a bit different, Steph, five years from now than where they are today. And of course, they're quite a bit different today than they were 20 years ago. Well, thanks, Craig. I appreciate your insight and comments. And uh, Harold's offset here. He's smiling big and broad because he knows the power of those charitable gift annuities and how wise they are. They're awesome. Wanna... They're really awesome. They really are. Yeah. I want to encourage our friends watching right now. You can pick up a copy of Don't Bank On It, absolutely free, courtesy of Swiss America by going to SwissAmerica.com. That's their website. Or actually, here's a better idea. Give a free call to this toll-free number, 1-800-289-2646 to get your copy of Don't Bank On It. Did you know that millions live in spiritual darkness seeking the Word of God? Lacey Broadcasting is piercing the darkness 24 hours a day. The window of opportunity to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ has never been greater, but who knows when it will close. Join Partners in Faith today for as little as $25 a month and you can help us bring light into a dark world. Join us by visiting partnerinfaith.com today.
Once again, we're in another place where the Bible just absolutely comes alive. And this is one of our favorite places to come. This is what we call the Sea of Galilee, but actually, technically, it's the Lake Kinneret. That's right. Well, you have a couple of versions for the name. The name at the Old Testament, it's Kinneret, which comes from Hebrew, from the shape of a harp, okay. maybe because one can actually see the old Sea of Galilee from one place and it looks like a prolonged oval shape. Okay. Um, in the New Testament it is referred to both as Lake Tiberias mm -hmm. and the Sea of Galilee. But it's a lake. It's mm -hmm. a drinking water, freshwater lake. You know, today one third of the water consumption of the East Valleys come from here, from wow. this sea portions of the water coming to the sea goes to Jordan mm -hmm. and by that sustain the, the, the peace treaty between okay. Israel and Jordan. This is how vital it is. Yeah. Going through the pages of the New Testament without being over here, tasting the St. Peter fish, mm -hmm. seeing how cool and quiet the Sea of Galilee is and, and the breeze and the shifting of weather and how it is lush and green during the winter and fall and how it is yellow. Without seeing that, without experience that, it's like reading Don Quixote uh, in, in the English version without knowing Spanish. Back in Jesus' day, this would have been a very, very important place because of the water, the fishing, it, economically, politically, militarily. This really was a very important location. Well, the people that Jesus meet, mm -hmm tax collectors, mm -hmm. the fishermen, mm -hmm. the poor peasants or the farmers or the agriculturers, mm -hmm. they are all over here with the, the reason right. why they're here. The reason that he leaves Nazareth, a right. far remote village mm -hmm. of, we could have kind of like got the idea that not the most intelligent Jewish people would live over there. Uh -huh. And he goes to where? To a place in which he would find the audience that he mm -hmm. tries to preach mm -hmm. and to um, transfer or put, project yeah. the ministry to, towards yeah. and on the other side a place that would be bustling with people. Right. That would be the Sea of Galilee. Yeah. That's a magnet, mm -hmm. a focus of, 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 of life over yeah. here. This area was controlled by the Romans, uh, mainly based out of Tiberias, but still this was a very Jewish area. Absolutely. When we talk about, uh, well, Tiberius was established in the honor of Caesar Tiberius. Mm -hmm. It is established probably in the year 15 or 18 AD. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the first time we come across the elder life of Jesus mm -hmm. would be the 15th year mm -hmm. of Tiberius, John the Baptist okay. would baptize. Right. So we're talking about around 15 years that the city of Tiberius mm -hmm. is over there. But the city of Tiberius is the city of the Sadducees and mm -hmm. the Sadducees with mm -hmm. cemeteries okay. controlled by the Romans. This okay. is a mixed city. Okay. This is absolutely not the the, the place that Jesus is going to Not Jesus' go. crowd. That's right. Yeah, not, the, yeah. not, not Jesus' cup of tea. Yeah, yeah. Now, this is uh, really way, way below sea level. Uh-huh. Uh, well, if you are, uh, uh, you know, coming over here, let's say 200,000 years ago, you yeah. would have to bring your scuba gear with you, your okay. snorkel. Now, the water level had descended, and we are, the surface of the Sea of Galilee is just a little under 600 feet below sea level. So okay. yes, you are underneath sea level yeah. uh, in the lowest drinking water lake in the yeah. world. Now, when Christ would uh, go from Galilee to Jerusalem, it would have been a very difficult walk. For Christ, it wouldn't be so difficult, yeah. but for everybody else, it would be. Yeah. It means that you go for three days at least. Mm -hmm. um, you carry your bundles with you. What about the you know, burglars? What right. about mugs? Uh -huh. How can you take your gold with you? Mm -hmm. You have to buy something else to trade with when you get to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. That's why in Jerusalem, people came from all over yeah. and you had to have the money changers. Mm -hmm. You I don't see. have the money changers because people wouldn't bring their money. Mm -hmm. They would either bring mm -hmm. their own money, but they wouldn't change it back home because that would be a hot stolen or right. hot goods to be mm -hmm. stolen. It seems like Christ's ministry was primarily here on the north end of the, uh, of the lake and not on the south end. Is there a reason why? Well, I'll tell you what, I think that, and again, this one is open for interpretation. I, I, I would say it comes from the other way around. The very ground that would give birth to, uh, to the New Testament could not have been born anywhere else but in the Galilee. Mm -hmm. When we will be in mm -hmm. Jerusalem, when you will come to Israel and you tour Jerusalem, you'd see the cliffs, mm -hmm. you'd see the barren rocks, yeah. the barren hills. Yeah. If you want to get a sip of water, one have to climb all the way down with his donkey, carry mm -hmm. it, pull it on, yeah. put it back up and 
Over here, take a look. We're yeah. in the Sea of Galilee. It looks like a painter came over right. here with a brush and painted everything. So how can one be surprised yeah. if Jesus is saying, take whatever you need, but for now, because God will provide. Yeah. Because over here, going to the water, it's not a big deal. You know, how can we understand when, when uh, Jesus is saying, if somebody slaps you in the face, give him the other cheek. Yeah. Very, very different than the tribes and mm. the prophets and the priests of Judea. Yeah. Uh -huh. They come with a very aggressive, right. very hard, not uh -huh. compromising uh -huh. message. Uh -huh. Because in Jerusalem, right. if you don't have this uh, path that will mm -hmm. take you towards the water, you don't have water. That's yeah. it, you're done. Over here, you would go a couple of feet that way yeah. and you would be provided. Many of the stories of Christ out on the Sea of Galilee with the disciples involved storms. It's very peaceful today. How did they have storms? Absolutely. The answer is just silent mm -hmm. and pause. When you come over here to the Sea of Galilee, I can bet that there will not be a storm, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you stand over here and you see how quiet it is, this is the perspective in which one should see the storm that happened. Yeah because the storm was the divine providence, mm -hmm. not the coming down of the storm. The very storm mm -hmm. that happened was the divine providence. Wow, that's amazing. Well, thanks for sharing with us about the Sea of Galilee. What an amazing story and what an amazing place. Every day, thousands of people pass into eternity without Jesus Christ. That's why we're launching our Global Summer Harvest Campaign and why we have a strategic goal of $600,000 to help share the love of Christ in the next 90 days. Your gift today will be used to strengthen the ministries of LaCie Broadcasting. So give now. Time is short and millions are still plunging over that cliff into eternity. Visit LaCie Broadcasting online at LaCie.com. I'm joined by Dr. Harold Hazen, our Director of Development here at LaCie Broadcasting. And Harold, you know, this has been really been a very exciting summer for us. We're right. talking about our Global Summer Harvest Campaign, mm -hmm. where we're, we're just trying to inform people and energize people about continuing to give all summer long, and summer's still with us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're still, we, we've got a couple more weeks before we uh, close the campaign, and so we would like people to step up and, and uh, give us a final push to get us over the goal, but people have stepped up. It's been a great summer for us. The kids are all going back to school, and summer's mm -hmm. coming to a close, and mm -hmm. the needs are still there, and uh, by people contributing to this uh, campaign right now, they're going to help us continue to really minister around the world in unique ways. Yeah. Well, that's the amazing thing is we, we do keep doing what we're doing, but what I've been trying to tell people is we want to reach more people. We want to open up new outreaches. We want to get into new areas. There's still millions and millions of people that have not heard the gospel, and this is one way that people can be missionaries right from their, old home, their own home. Earlier this week, we had a, a, a meeting with a, a an individual from a publishing company. We're talking about right. uh, mm -hmm. doing some new new things with a, a devotional and a Bible and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But what was really interesting even to me is as we continue the conversation, just talking about all the different aspects and outreaches of LaCie Broadcasting. Yeah, I know. It and, and, and even when we talked to this representative from the from the company there, it was overwhelmed as we went through the many different outreaches, just one after another, the many different ways that we have to reach so many millions of people. And you know, the Bible tells us that even if there's just one soul left on earth that has not heard the gospel, we're supposed to work until Jesus That's comes. Right. And, and we know he's coming any day. We're supposed to be ready for him to come any day. What will he find us doing? We find us working and watching. So what are we asking people to do? We're asking people to step up right now. I would love for them to become partners in faith. I would love for them to start a monthly giving program at 25 or 50 or 83 or $100 a month. Uh, uh, on a regular basis, not just for the campaign, but right. to keep it going. But if they can't see a monthly, a way to give monthly, then step up and give 50 or 100 or $200 a month, whatever it might, or $200 in a single gift, whatever God lays on your heart, I would love to see them give $100 right now. I wonder if we maybe have 100 people out there. Mm -hmm. I, I just thought of that, but maybe we have 100 people out there that would give $100 a month or $100 in a single gift. Uh, that would be that would be a, a blessing. That would be a huge help. You know, one of the easiest ways for people to give is to put that on an automatic charge on a bank card, which yeah. is what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with a travel schedule that's fairly busy and a lot of yeah. things going on in my life, uh, sometimes you may forget this or forget that. And I, I get a bill, you know, from yeah. the utility company. That's right. I get a bill from the phone company. That's right. Uh, you know, I know when I have to pay my mortgage. 
Uh, but sometimes, you know, you can let that giving thing kind of slip away and you don't think about it like you should. And so the easiest thing for me was to put it on an automatic charge on my bank card. Yeah, and that's the most God-honoring way because it's the first thing that gets done. And that's, right. that's really what we need to do. You know, I talk about stewardship all the time and stewardship means that we place God first because everything belongs to God anyway. So we need to give back our portion to God First of all, every month, a good way to do that is just that, like you say, do it on your monthly card. So 100, we need 100 of you to call in today. Be a part of changing lives around the world. Let's hear from Nell Warner right now and why she supports LaCie Broadcasting. I met my husband. Um, we've been married 51 years now. <clears throat> and I met him through 4-H. And then ironically, that's his, his career went into that. He worked with youth all his life. After we moved here to Noblesville, about five years ago, he diagnosed with a stroke in the brain. It was serious, and they did brain surgery, and you know, I just had to cry out to Jesus, and I'd cry out to Jesus, and then he would begin to respond, and this has happened time after time. After a couple months, I was able to bring him home, and that's a real blessing, because we could be in our own environment. What I, what I have experienced since my husband is not able to talk with me, is I believe through Christian television. They're part of my family. We watch the Harvest Show and that's good just to get, you know, what's going on in the world. Supporting the seed broadcasting is important because I believe we are doing what God wants done. But if you support the, where God's heart is, you're pleasing the Lord. And I know they give out Bibles, you know, people request for Bibles. I think Lester Summerall was one of the first ones, first ministry that really started uh, feeding the hungry. Well, I, I believe if you are receiving from the network, I just believe that we need to support them because if nobody supports them, they wouldn't be able to do the work. That's why we, we support it because it's, it's what God wants done. Great words of encouragement from Nell there. And uh, I mean, she's basically said it all. When we partner together, God's work gets done. The hungry are getting fed. The word of God is getting published and printed and sent out to people who are hungry for a copy of the Bible for themselves. The message of the gospel is going out around the world through Middle East television and through Lissy Broadcasting's networks here in the United States, connections with a broadcasters abroad as well. The gospel is being preached, but it's because of partners like Nell and like you who say, I want to do something significant. I want to make my time on earth here count. And today we've got the opportunity through this summer global harvest campaign to really get the job done. I want to encourage you right now. It's real simple to become a partner by going online. You just write, you know, just go to lacy.com and you'll see right there on, on that page a place where it says give now, you click on that, and that'll take you to a, a landing page where you can uh, read a little bit about what you're investing in, and then also make that decision to sow whatever it is that God has put on your heart, whether that's $100 or $50 or $750, whatever it may be. Put in that contact information there to just get that right on your bank card, debit card, credit card, so that seed can get into the ground. And then when you click submit, there you go. You have sown into good soil and really, the world's going to be different because of it. Because of you, because of your partnership, we're able to go strongly in bringing the Word of God around the world with really taking advantage of new opportunities as they come by. As President Pete Summerall has mentioned in these last several weeks about new stations being acquired, new opportunities for the gospel to go out into different places, uh, new opportunities with spread the word and the demand that people have for the word of God. The reason we can do this is because of friends like you who believe in the mission of LaCie Broadcasting and believe in the commitment and the, uh, the great commission that Jesus gave to all of us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Brian Bush, as you know, is our correspondent who lives and resides in the land of Israel. He lives there in the Middle East. He knows how important Christian television and Christian broadcasting is. He knows how important the Word of God is in sending the Word of God in, in that printed form to people who are hungry and thirsty to know about Jesus. And uh, here's Brian to share a little bit about what it means to be a partner with LaCie Broadcasting and why we must now all engage in this global summer harvest campaign. Hello friends, uh, happy Friday to you. And I'm coming to you to say a very big warm thank you from the lovely warm <laughs> Jerusalem here. I'm standing outside the old city walls and what strikes me when I was setting up this 
a picture is that tree right there it's all there by itself it's a big old tree that's coming up out of the ground big old pine tree and what does that speak to me about it speaks to me about that seed that's planted into good soil and how it grows in the bible in the old testament in particular it talks about how you know shade is provided by a strong healthy tree and it gives us comfort that we can gather underneath it and and seek refuge from the hot sun and friends that's what the gospel is that's what the gospel is for the hurting people of the middle east that's why i'm here to tell you a very big thank you as this month winds down you've done a great job in raising funds to help us continue our ministries through these summer months so that we can continue to pump the gospel out through the airwaves through the internet through bibles through food into hungry bellies friends all these things speak of the love of god and they speak of your answering of the call to get the great commission fulfilled to get the gospel out there to countless people through the sea broadcasting and again i want to say thank you particularly from here in the middle east where there's so much trouble so much death and destruction so much despair and displacement friends thank you for helping us these months with our global summer harvest campaign won't you call in make a donation we're so grateful that you have responded to the good call to keep these ministries up and running through the sea broadcasting and i just want to say again thank you for all that you have done continue to pray for the situation here in the middle east and continue your support please of the sea broadcasting and these wonderful ministries that god has put into our hands thank you friends have a good day well, that was a very excited Brian Bush talking about the Global Summer Harvest campaign. You know, if it were not for people like you, we would not be able to share with you news from a Christian perspective that's happening there in the Middle East. That's how we're able to bring Brian Bush to you in Middle East television. So many lives are being, are being changed as a result of the ministry that we offer, but we need your help. What we're asking you to do is come alongside Lassie Broadcasting and give to the Ministry of Global Summer Harvest. And it's, an, uh, you know, we're, we've been doing this program throughout the summer, but the summer is about to end and we want to end strong, on a strong note. So what we're asking you to do is say yes, call in to 1-800-365-3732 and say yes, I'd like to donate to Lassie Broadcasting. You can give that $50 or $25, but I want you to pray about it. First, I want you to pray and ask God how much you should give to the ministry and ask God to bless the seed that you plant in Lissy Broadcasting, that his word will not return void. We're asking you to do that right now because we need to keep ministries like METV and FETV and The Harvest Show and Prayer Line open and available to you. So many lives are being changed, as I've said, but you don't have to take my word from it. Here's a viewer from Israel who says, I'm staying with a good friend every Saturday who has an employer that lets us watch METV as long as we want. Hallelujah. Now here in the West, we're able to watch Christian television, let's see broadcasting anytime we want to. But in other countries, that's not the case. That's why we want to keep Lassie on the air. So when you write in and say, yes, I'll give that $100 or $10, we'll send you the book, Secrets to Answered Prayers, our gift to you for being a donor to Lassie Broadcasting. Just call that number or go online, Lassie.com, and say, yes, I'd like to give to the ministry of Lassie Broadcasting to keep uh, the gospel going around the world. We're making a difference in lives. You don't have to take my word for it. Just so many people are writing in and calling in. Here to tell you more about it is the president and CEO of Lassie Broadcasting. Pete, what do you have for us? Thank you, Valerie. And today we're looking for you to call and become a part of the Global Summer Harvest, 1-800-365-3732 or lassie.com. And, you know, Harold, I, I, I believe God laid on your heart to hear from 100 people today who would yes. commit $100. Yes, that did happen. It just come to me as we were talking about it, and God does that at mm -hmm. times. I've been in stewardship for many, many years, and God will reveal those things to me. And it just 100 people right now that would 
pick up the phone and call us and give $100 to wind up this summer campaign with a, with a grand finale that we didn't quit. We ran right through to the end. Over the last five or six years you've been with us, you've really immersed yourself totally in the teachings that my dad does. That's right. And it really, his ministry was all about reaching out around the world and changing lives for the better. That's right. And I just read in some of his work this morning, as a matter of fact, as I was reading in his devotional that he has a word there about reaching out and he says, uh, our work is to go, go, go. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's pretty simple. We just go, go, go. Now you folks can't always go, but you can help the people who do. You can help the ministries right. that do, and that's Let's See Broadcasting. You know, one of the things, Harold, that my dad always used to tell me, he said, if you're not moving forward, you're going backwards. That's right. You can't stay the same. Amen. And uh, it applies to our spiritual life, and it applies to our ministry. If we're not continuing to reach out around the world and change lives, we're going backwards, and that's what we're all about. So go to the phone today, 1-800-365-3732, or you can go to lacie.com. You can give safe and secure online, but the global summer harvest continues on, and we need to hear from you today. So go to the phone. We need to hear from that one, those 100 people that God laid on Harold's heart to give $100. We need to hear from you today. So 1-800-365-3732, or go to lacie.com. We need to hear from you right now. Thank you for being with us today on Harvest. Look forward to seeing you next week. Paul the Apostle wrote to his beloved Philippian friends, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Well, that's exactly how we feel about you, our partners in faith. We thank God every day for you, for your prayers, and for your faithful month-by-month -month financial support. Dr. Lester Sumrall founded Lassie Broadcasting because God gave him a vision to win one million souls for Jesus. He knew he would need a faith that moves mountains, but more than that, he knew he would need thousands of committed partners who stood with him to support this huge missionary effort. Every day, Lassie Broadcasting is reaching millions of lost men, women, and children who are seeking hope. Your loyal monthly partner in faith commitment makes it all possible. Please don't grow weary in well-doing. You are bringing hope where there is no hope. Thank you, and God bless you. If you're like me, you want the very best for your family. You want health resources as dependable as those that provide them. At Making Healthy Choices, we understand that, which is why families all across America have chosen us for over 15 years. We know that well-being is more than supplementation. It's a way of life. It's a choice to put the highest value on your family's health. Choose life. Log on to mhclife.com. Do it today. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.